Welcome to this version of 5 Minute Bayes. I'd like to consider how to analyze a contingency table, in other words, a set of uh, count data, uh, in this case, in a 2 by 2 cross classification using Bayes factor. So let's say we're interested in whether a newly developed drug, phlogiston, developed to treat depression in children, has some undesirable side effects. In particular, sometimes antidepressants increase the rate of suicides and would like to know whether phlogiston increases suicide rates in children. So the data look like this. We have a group of children who took phlogiston. This number committed suicide, this number didn't. And we have corresponding counts in the placebo case. Now, if phlogiston increases the rate of suicide, then this number, A, should be relatively high. And conversely, B would be low in the placebo case, and hence D would be relatively high. In other words, A and D would be high relative to B and C. So we can represent the relationship between taking the drug and committing suicide as an odds ratio, which is the counts A times D divided by B times C. Now the interesting thing about an odds ratio is if we take the logarithm of it, the natural logarithm, then it's approximately normally distributed. With a standard error that's easy to calculate, Namely, the standard error is the square root of 1 over the sum of each of the cell counts. So the square root of 1 over A plus 1 over B plus 1 over C plus 1 over D. So here's some imaginary data. Let's say we have 200 children who are given phlogiston, 200 given placebo in a double-blind trial. Five committed suicide in the phlogiston group and two in the placebo group. The question is, is there any evidence at all, one way or the other, for whether phlogiston increases the suicide rate? Well, the odds ratio in this case is five times 198 divided by two times 195, and that's 2.54. Having got the odds ratio, and incidentally, if there's no association between the variables here, the odds ratio will be 1. But to normalize it, we'll take the natural logarithm of it. Now, if you want to do that, you can Google online calculator scientific. And then I found, I just pressed go, that this calculator comes up. And here you have LN, which means natural log. You click on that, and then you can click 2.54, close bracket, equals 0 0.93. So you can get the natural logarithm easily that way. So now we can find the standard error. The standard error, first we obtain 1 over 5 plus 1 over 195 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 198 and square root all of that, and then you get 0 0.84 for the standard error. Now the log odds ratio, if there's no association, that will be 0. In this case, we have a measure of association which is 0.93 with a standard error of 0.84. If we wanted to, we could do a significance test on that. We divide the log odds ratio by a standard error to get a z-score. 1.96 would be the two-tailed cutoff at the 5% level. In fact, the p-value for this, you can look it up in normal tables, area under the normal curve, is 0.27, so non-significant. Incidentally, if you had performed a, a chi-squared, 2 by 2 chi-squared on this, with or without uh, 
correction for continuity, you'll get a p-value extremely close to this. The problem with doing chi-squared is it's just a p-value producing machine, and so it isn't really of much use to anyone. I think in terms of odd ratios, which is a measure of effect size, strength of association, we can produce p-values if we want, but we can do more than that. Now, in terms of producing p-values, you might say, look, it's non-significant. There's no, and you might be tempted to conclude, erroneously, there's no association between taking the drug and suicide rate. Therefore, the drug doesn't have suicide as a side effect. It's quite safe for our children. That would be the wrong conclusion to draw because a non-significant result by itself means absolutely nothing. But we have everything we need here to perform a Bayes factor in terms of what the data are telling us. But what we need in addition is some estimate of how big an association we could expect if the drug had increased suicide rate. Now, I did a quick search on Google and uh, I found this paper, which gave some data about a antidepressant, paroxetine, and it had a two by two table, like the one I've just drawn up, and paroxetine increased suicide rate compared to placebo, just in terms of the sample odds ratio estimated in the table, with an odds ratio of six. The natural log of 6 is 1.8. So we have an idea, we have a handle on the sort of effect size we could expect an antidepressant to have in terms of increasing suicide rate. So what we can do is to use the 1.8 as a standard deviation for a half normal in the base factor calculator. So if we go back here, notice we had a measure of the strength of association, the log of the odds ratio, 0.93. You can enter that as the mean in the calculator over here. So we'll put in 0.93. We have a standard error we calculated, 0.84, so we put that in here. So that's what the data is. That's a sufficient summary of the data. So we've entered the log odds ratio as a sample mean and a standard error as a sample standard error. Now we can say no to uniform because we've got an expected, roughly expected uh, sense of uh, the sort of effect size that could obtain. So we can use a half normal. To use a half normal, we always put a one for tails, a zero here, and we'll put 1.8. For the standard deviation of the half normal. We click go. The base factor is 1.18. That is very close to 1. A base factor of 1 means the data are completely undiscriminating. They do not distinguish in any way the null hypothesis of no association with the hypothesis of an association between the drug and suicide rate. By convention, the cutoff for substantial evidence is either three and more for there being an association or a third and less for there being no association. So these data are non-discriminating. You could not use this non-significant this non result to argue the drug has no side effects. Base factor is telling you we must collect more data before we know the drug is safe in this respect.